Today, an FDA approval in lung cancer, a breakthrough therapy in breast cancer, and new data in melanoma. Hello and welcome to OncLive News Network. I'm Laura Jones. Three months ahead of schedule, the FDA approved nivolumab for patients with non-squamous, non-small cell lung cancer who progressed on or following platinum-based chemotherapy. The decision was based on data from the Phase 3 Checkmate 057 trial. In the data that led to the approval, second-line nivolumab reduced the risk of death by 27% versus docetaxel, including a 60% risk reduction among patients with the highest levels of PDL1 expression. The IHC test for PDL1 was approved along with nivolumab as a complementary diagnostic. This means its use is not mandated prior to administering nivolumab. In the 057 trial, higher PDL1 expression was associated with improved survival among the 78% of patients for whom PDL1 status was detectable. In breast cancer news, the FDA has granted the CDK46 inhibitor, abemaciclib, a breakthrough therapy designation as a monotherapy for heavily pretreated patients with refractory HR-positive advanced disease. This is based on data from a phase one study in which single agent abemaciclib demonstrated an objective response rate of 33.3% in patients with heavily pretreated HR-positive breast cancer. When including those with stable disease for 24 or more weeks, the clinical benefit rate with the drug was 61.1%. The median duration of response was 13.4 months, and the median progression-free survival was 8.8 .8 months. Patients with HR-negative disease did not experience a response with abemaciclib monotherapy. During a recent OncLive Insights interview, Dr. Hope Rugo of the Helen Diller Family Comprehensive Cancer Center explained some of the differences with abemaciclib compared with other CDK4-6 inhibitors being investigated in breast cancer. And then the third CDK inhibitor is the most different, abemaciclib, uh, Lily's CDK4-6 inhibitor, instead of being given for three weeks on, one week off, the way the other two are given, allowing the time for the bone marrow to recover, uh, uh, abemaciclib can be given continuously. And that's because it causes less bone marrow suppression. We don't know why, it's very interesting. It causes more diarrhea, which you see as a very uh, low incident side effect with the other two CDK4-6 inhibitors. Now, onto some positive findings in melanoma. The BRAF-MEC inhibitor combination of vimerafenib and cobimetinib demonstrated a statistically significant improvement in overall survival compared with vimerafenib alone for previously untreated patients with BRAF-V600 mutant unresectable or metastatic melanoma. In previous data from this Phase II COBRIM study, the combination demonstrated a five-month improvement in progression-free survival compared with vimerafenib plus placebo. The median PFS with vimerafenib plus cobimetinib was 12.25 months compared with 7.2 months for vimerafenib and placebo. This benefit translated to a 42% reduction in the risk of progression or death. The objective response rate was 69.6 for the combination versus 50% for vimerafenib. Overall survival data and long-term safety findings are being prepared for a presentation at an upcoming medical meeting. The FDA is currently reviewing data from the COBRIM study as part of a new drug application for the combination in melanoma. The PDL1 inhibitor Avelumab received both an orphan drug designation and a fast track designation for patients with Merkel cell carcinoma. Although results have not yet been announced, the two designations indicate promise for the treatment in this rare and aggressive skin cancer. If positive results are demonstrated, these designations will also help facilitate the submission of data for Avelumab to the FDA. At this time, there are no FDA-approved therapies for patients with this rare disease. 
However, phase two data in Merkel cell carcinoma were presented at the 2015 European Cancer Congress for the PD-1 inhibitor pembrolizumab. In this study, the objective response rate was 71 percent. Lead investigator Dr. Paul Neum told attendees at the time, Obviously, PD-1 has been variably effective across a variety of tumors, sometimes very effective, but no data was available for Merkel cell carcinoma. And that'll do it for today. Thanks so much for watching OncLive News Network. I'm Laura Jones. We'll see you next time.